Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at Halley and Sonic SE and to a lesser degree Halley and Sonic the big brother. SE is included with any version of Cubase and has been for some time but it's actually a free synth so even if you don't own any version of Cubase you can download it and use it with whichever host you want to. It comes with a wide range of general purpose sounds and a couple of more interesting sound generating engines which we're going to look at a little further on in the series but today it's going to be an overview of the synth and some of its features some of which you'll probably already know some of which you might not so let's just dive in so here you can see i've got a cubase project open and i've got halion sonic sc set up in an instrument track now quickly we're just going to take a look at the difference between se and halion sonic so if i open up halion sonic you can see it looks almost identical. There's some differences in the tabs here. So you can see we've got load, edit, MIDI, mix, effects, but then we've got multi here. There's more to it than that. Halion Sonic 3 comes with a much bigger sound library. So you've got many more sounds to choose from, but I've actually removed them from this computer. So we're only going to be seeing the sounds that you get with Halion Sonic SE. In addition, there's some areas which you can edit on Halion Sonic that you can't on SE. We will be looking at multi, which is the main feature you can see here, which is extra in Halion Sonic, but that will be on a later video in the series. So back to Halion Sonic, you can see the pretty standard Steinberg selector where you can pick by categories or you can search or pick by rating, etc. that kind of thing. So you're probably familiar with this from if you've loaded up any presets on pretty much any Steinberg thing. This is a a good idea in my opinion because it's it's much more consistent there's a couple of different ways you can do it so you can load it here so if you click load program with this triangle here you get the sort of hovering window with the same information in you can load a program to whichever slot you've got selected on the left hand side as you can see there are 16 of them and we're going to see a bit about that in this video and in a future video as well or you can click here. So you've got multiple places you can do it. Now, you may be wondering, well, why have they done that? Well, one of the reasons is this can have two different appearances. And this is one of the things that often catches people out because there's a keyboard shortcut, which takes it to a mode where it doesn't look like this. Okay, so you can go between player and editor mode and it defaults in editor mode. But to put it into player mode, the keyboard shortcut is E, which you can often hit depending on what you've been doing elsewhere in Cubase. I've done it many a time where I hit E and depending on where the focus is, we go into this player mode. And because we've got nothing loaded up, we end up with this pretty bare looking blank window. Hit E again and we pop back. So that's actually this P and then the E here do that. But if you're not aware of that, you can end up with a synth that you, you don't know what to do. But let's load up a sound. So we'll just load up this generic horn sound. We can see we get a nice little picture of a horn here. And now the play and editor mode flips between there and there. And this is another thing. It's really easy to end up try entering the polyphony here. And in this case, putting in an E and then... so. A couple of times that's happened to me where suddenly flicking between the two modes doesn't happen, but that may happen to you. Now, this is exactly the same as clicking on the edit, but without all the other stuff around it. So the editing in most of these sounds is pretty basic. Okay, so if we hear the sound, just sort of fairly generic horn kind of sound. Now, we get some simple editing. The kind of thing you'll have understood from plenty of other synths. So you've got octaves. Uh, coarse and fine tuning, pitch bend range, polyphony and so on. And then you get some basic controls. So cut off resonance, attack and release for the filter. And level and pan. And again, attack and release. So you can do some basic sound modification, but not a great deal. Now in this sound, we've got two layers. Okay. So we can see we've got, we've got English horn and we've got French horn here. So no doubt these two will be squabbling for the rest of their life. Um, you can change them independently. So you may have noticed that when I change the octave of this one, we've got another part to it. And that's because this French horn sound is high at this point. And then we can move that 
up and down, etc. So if you see a multi-layered sound, you'll have these layers which you can edit individually. So there's there's some flexibility, but it's it's not immense. Attack and release on filter and amplifier, fairly straightforward, etc. The main thing which is interesting if you're using Halin Sonic SE is that you can edit using these quick controls here. So these are the key to making the most interesting edits. Now these change depending on what sound you load up. So you can see here we've got tone, color, and emphasis, and staccato, etc. If we load up a different sound, so let's load up just the French horn, you can see that they've changed. So we'll go back to horn and more. You can see that some of them stay the same. So for instance, tone color is staying the same, but these other ones are changing. And these will change depending on each sound that you load up. So there again, these are all from this artist library and they have very little editing to them, etc. Using these controls is something which is, is really useful for changing these sounds. So let's find... Go back to Horn and More. So we've got this tone color here. So as I play a note, we can hear it's pretty much a filter sound, but it's it's not sounding synthetic. We're just picking up some brightness, etc. And emphasis, which sounds a lot like the resonance of the filter. So we don't know exactly what's happening underneath the hood, but we may not need to. So staccato. So clearly that's altering the envelope. And again, these are controls we may not have direct access to, but often they will give us what we want for them, etc. Some random panning. If you're listening in stereo, you can hear that's going all over the stereo field. Balance, depth, etc. But altering these controls in real time, particularly with your mouse, is not an option. You definitely can't alter more than one with a mouse. Uh, and you may want to do some performance with it. So assigning these to a MIDI controller if you have one is really useful. So here you can see I've got my trusty Akai MPK Mini. So it's got eight performance knobs on there, K1 to K8. They're currently assigned to MIDI controllers 70 to 77 because they're out of the way and they don't generally interfere with other things. So now I'm going to assign those to these controls here and that's actually reasonably easy to do now often you might need to do it the other way around you might need to change the settings on your midi controller to control a particular control but here you can just map them you don't even need to know what control you're actually sending i think it's a good idea that you do know because there can be times when that knowledge can be important but a lot of the time it doesn't really matter you can just do this tweak a control and you'll be away so let's assign tone color. So if we right click or two finger tap in the case of a Mac and then go to learn CC. So that menu will look pretty much the same if you're on Windows or Mac. And now it's ready. And the next time it gets a controller message, it's going to assign that to that control. So I'm going to tweak K1. So we'll see that going here. And now you can see that's adjusting that. And it's also adjusting the mod wheel because that's what that's normally mapped to. So We've got this situation where that's doing that. Now, emphasis, again, if I want to control that with number two, I'm just going to right click, two finger tap, learn CC, and then I'm going to adjust number, knob number two, and you'll see that's now going. So now we've got something we can perform with. Now, clearly this takes some practice. If you've seen videos of people like Christian Henson moving their controllers as they do this, you'll see that it, it becomes automatic and you can really get some good performance characteristics out of this. Now, what's useful about this is if we change to a different sound, so if I change to Voyager bass, those knob assignments stay with Halion rather than with the sound that you've loaded up. So. Knob number two on my controller is still moving knob number two on screen, even though it's now bass emphasis rather than the uh, emphasis of the filter that it was previously. That means once you've got it set up in a given project, you're done. For the most part, 
Editing on Halion Sonic SE is fairly limited. The synth sounds, which we've already seen, have got some fairly basic controls. It's nothing where you're gonna be able to dig in and really change the sounds. However, that isn't the case for all the synth engines, for Halion Sonic generally, and fortunately with SE there are two which are included, which give you much more access to controls. We're gonna look at both of those very briefly, and then there will be another video in the series which will include a deep dive into them. But this should get you started. So back on the load screen, you can see that we've got all instrument sets here. Now, if you click that, you will see all of the instrument sets you've got installed. You should have Flux and Trip. So we've already seen these controls from Basic, Hybrid, Artist and Pro, but Flux and Trip are the ones that give us access to some control. So let's take a look at Trip. So if we click trip there, we can see it's selected at the top. So now we are only seeing sounds which belong to that. And now we can pick something. So let's pick a synth lead. Apparently they're all arpeggio. So we'll go to sour wine and see what that's like. Certainly a, a fair bit more interesting than the uh, French horn sound we just had. And if we go to the edit page, you can see now we get some controls. So we can actually do some proper synth editing. So we've got a few pages here. We've got oscillator, uh, sub oscillator and noise, etc. We've got a modulation section and uh, an arpeggiator as well. So we've got plenty we can play around with here. I'll leave you to tweak that. We're also gonna look at the other engine, which is Flux. So again, back on the load page, we can pick Flux, and now we only see the sounds for Flux. I'm going to reset there, and then pick, let's pick Synth Pad, uh, Digital, and My Dreams, let's say. So here we go. And again, back on the edit page, you can see now we've got a wavetable synth we can edit. We've got multiple pages, oscillator, sub, mod, voice, and up. And you can see, for instance, on the mod page, we've got lots of options seven of which have already been filled, and as a result, we get a complicated sound. There's plenty we can do here. This will be in another video because it's definitely worthy of another video. It's also covered in my book, if you want to take a look at that chapter. We're going to move on now to the MIDI section. So the MIDI section allows us to pick some fairly basic things about each timbre, each sound generator from within. So we have 16 and we can control them individually. So as you're going to see in a bit, we can layer sounds up and this can allow us to have key switches between them, etc. So you can pick the low and high note by clicking and dragging, etc. or typing a value in. So let's make this respond to nothing below there. And you can see on the bottom of the screen, it reacts appropriately, so it shows that this will not play until we're there. So if I play a B2 on the on-screen keyboard, it doesn't react, and then C3 does. The same would go for the upper limit. You can transpose, which you could use to create harmonies, etc., across multiple tracks. The polyphony, so you can limit the polyphony if you want to, and also pick the channel. Now, this is probably the most useful part of this because... This ability to change the channels is really useful, as we're going to see now. So by default, Cubase will channelize the MIDI data to channel one. So when you play on your MIDI keyboard, it's probably set to channel one anyway. But even if it's not, it will get fixed to channel one as it passes through. And then Halion Sonic will only receive information on that channel. So the other 15 will be effectively wasted. What we can do is we can set these other timbres, the, the sound generators inside there to receive on channel one, and then you can layer sounds up. So that's what we're going to look at now. So here I'm going to take channel two, I'm going to pick a sound for it. So let's load a program and let's just pick a fairly generic kind of string section sound. So I'm just going to pick a GM string ensemble one for the sake of just getting that done. Now, at the moment, when I play, I'm going to go back to MIDI, you can see when I play my keyboard, the one is lighting up on the screen. So you can see that one and we're only playing my dreams. We're not playing string ensemble one. If we change MIDI channel here to one, now 
you can see they both play. And suddenly we've got this ability to layer all these different sounds in whichever way we want. You can load all 16, you can set them all to channel one and you can have a big layered sound, etc. And, you know, already we've got something just arbitrarily, which is possibly useful. You can also do key switches. So here I'm going to bring the high key of the string ensemble sound down to B2. So this will play the lower notes. So at the moment, my little keyboard is set to play in that high note. Now, if I move it down an octave with the octave button, now I'm playing that. If I had a big keyboard attached, I've got one under here. It's not plumbed into the Mac, but you can play multiples. You can set up all those different key zones. So you can have multiple different key zones. You could have drums, bass, strings, a lead instrument, set all of those up and then perform all of those in one go. So this is, on the face of it, a fairly boring page, but actually gives you a lot of power if you want to start layering sections up. Another area you might find useful is the fact you can move these around. So you don't see this by default. So if you've got a full range and you click this keyboard, it's not going to move. But if you set up an octave, so let's say we've got C3 to C4, if you want to move that, you can just pick it up and move it around. So you can move your octave of, let's say, bases. You decided you want to have them an octave higher. You can move that really easily. You don't have to set these individually. So once you've set your interval, you can move those around pretty easily. You can set those fairly quickly around those. So once you've got those ranges set up, it's pretty easy to create something complicated and interesting. And the, the sky's your limit as far as that's concerned. But once you've done that, you will need to start doing some audio mixing. And that takes us on to the next page, which is mix. So here we've got those two sounds set up, and as you can see when I play them at the moment, they're both at fairly even volume. So what I want to do is to reduce the level of my dreams. You can just do it with this fader here. So we're just gonna get some of that in there, and it's just gonna poke its head out over the top. You can control pan, as you'd imagine, and we've also got four effects sends, which are built in. The final thing is outputs. So by default, Hal and Sonic will just have a main stereo output which is set up when it's used as an instrument track you can use multiple outputs which gives you the freedom to then send each timbre individually into cubase's mixer and process it accordingly do a lot more complicated things and use third party vst effects etc on them but we're going to look at that later on because there's a fair bit you can do with it and for a lot of people it's a complex minefield that you get into and it can be difficult to deal with so for the time being, we're just going to leave those on the main out. But we do have these effects processors, which takes us on to the next section. So in effects, we've got four effects chains where we've got four effects in each send. So we can choose from the effects which are here. So let's say I want to put a delay onto one of these. I'm just going to load up this multi-delay. I'm not going to change the settings because you can noodle around with that in your own time but here by turning this up on number one which is my dreams we're going to get some delay you can hear now we've got delay just on that sound and then maybe i want to add some reverb to the string ensemble so again going to go under here under reverb let's just pick reverb rather than reverence but we've got a reverb effect here and again I can turn up FX2 on the string ensemble. And now you can hear we've got effects on that. I'm going to probably turn that delay down a little bit. But because you've got multiple effects, you can change what you've got in there, have multiple effects. You've got a output fader as well, so you can control that. Uh, there's a fair bit in here, as well as having some control over the main, where again, you can insert some effects into that main output there for the entire synth. The final page here is options. And to be honest, there's not really much of a great deal of interest at this point because it's it's all fairly, you know, esoteric settings, etc. The defaults are pretty sensible. And automation is a complex topic in the context of something like this, where you've got multiple timbers that you can automate individually. So for the time being, we're going to leave that alone. So there you have it. 
A quick summary of Halion Sonic SE and its main features. As you've seen, the sounds included with it for the most part are fairly workmanlike and don't offer an enormous amount of editing possibilities, but the sounds which use Flux and Trip as their sound engines do. You can edit them completely. Always be aware that Options anxiety can be a thing. If you've got 4,000 different synth sounds to choose from, you can spend a long time looking for that perfect sound instead of actually making music with something which is 95% of the way there that you then tweak later on or actually decide you don't need it in the song anyway. Halion Sonic offers some useful possibilities with the ability to mix sounds together and create complicated multi timbral sounds, particularly with the effects which are in there. And as we'll see later on in the series, using Flux and Trip can mean you've got some real synthesis possibilities in there. I hope you found this useful, and as ever, if you have, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.